In this video, I want to give you an update on the children's book that I created and published in just seven days and how I did it. Welcome to my channel. My name is Caroline and I make videos to help you master your mindset and make money online so that you can build a life you love. So recently I did make a couple of videos where I was talking about that I was creating and that I was in the process of publishing a children's book and how I was going to do that. I will link to those videos in the description below and at the top of the screen if you haven't seen those videos and you want to check those ones out. But first, let me show you the book that I created because it is done, it is finished, it is published and it is selling on Amazon. So here is my children's picture book and it is called the Duck That Lost Its Quack. This is a children's picture book aimed at kids around three to six years of age. And it's a story about a duck who gets a little bit lost. She loses her quack and she enlists the help of some really cute little farm animals to help her find her quack. And so there is a little bit of learning about the different kinds of noises animals make within the story. So I wrote this story over a day or two and then I illustrated the book myself. And no, I am not a professional or even a amateur illustrator. I had never illustrated a book before while I do have some self-taught background in graphic design. I've never done anything like this before and I didn't pay anyone to help me with any aspects of the book whatsoever. So I will get into that process a little bit later in the video. And I also created the cover myself, but I love how it turned out. I am really happy with it, particularly as a first time published children's book author. So how did I do this? Well, first of all, I did take a course. I took the children's book creator course, which was created and run by my lovely friend Nuria from the Home Boss YouTube channel. I know a lot of you also watch her channel and so you may have already heard her talk about her course or heard me talk about it in my previous videos. Nuria does publish children's books and so she created a course on how she does it and in fact she just actually won an award for one of her books which is called Monty's Rainbow Road Adventure which is a book all about learning colors. So congrats, Nuria, it is well-deserved. But my point is, if you are interested in taking her course, you are going to be learning from somebody who publishes books herself and knows what she's talking about when creating these kinds of books. I do have links to her course in the description below if you wanna find out more information about it. It is an extremely affordable course, in my opinion, especially considering the amount of content that is in there. And so just going back to my book, now I did do a soft launch, I would say, of this book. A very small experimental soft launch. I did do some paid promotions on some book promo websites and email lists for when the book went live. I also sent out some advanced copies of the book, some digital copies of the book to people who were interested in reviewing books in general. And when they said they were interested in re reviewing mine, I was happy to send them a digital copy in the hopes that they would leave me a review when the book went live. And I did this to try and get some reviews right out of the gate, some sales right out of the gate to help the Amazon algorithm decide or determine whether my book was going to be popular, whether it was going to sell, whether people were going to like it, which would in turn make them hopefully push it in the search results to their customers. Now, I have done a few videos recently where I talk about the importance of that first week or the first couple of weeks of a book being live on Amazon and what happens in those first few days is critical to the life of your book, usually in terms of Amazon figuring out whether your book is popular, whether it's liked by their customers or what it, whether it's what the customer wants. I also did create a Kindle version of the book and it wasn't my original plan to create one and it, selling the Kindle version of the book isn't really my priority because I don't feel like children's picture books are really made for Kindle. They're made to be a paperback where you sit and read them with your child as a parent. But I did create a Kindle version of the book because I did want to do a free giveaway and be able to send that free copy of the book to people to generate as many sales or downloads, I, I guess, in order to get reviews as soon as the book was live on Amazon. And aside from that, I have run no further promotions and have done no advertising at all for this book. So I made the book live on the 1st of November, 2021. And since then, up to today, the day that I'm filming this video, which is the 13th 
of December, I have sold a total of 649 Kindle copies. Majority of those were free copies, 23 paperbacks, and have received 3,441 KNEP reads, which is basically the Kindle Unlimited subscription where Amazon subscribers who are subscribed to Kindle Unlimited can read books for free or as part of their their subscription in the sense that they don't have to go buy the book, they can read it through their Kindle Unlimited account and authors get paid per page read. So having a children's book isn't going to generate much money through that side of the business because that one generally works by volume. The bigger the book, the more page reads you're going to get and you're going to get paid more. So that's just a very small part of it that gets added on. But for children's books, ideally you're going to be wanting to be selling mainly paperbacks. So at this point I've made about $100 um, in total from this book. Now, that's nothing to write home about. It's nothing that I'm going to be able to retire on, but it is my first children's picture book that I've created and I do have plans to make more. And that's a book that is pretty much selling from day one with almost no promotion at all once it went live on Amazon. The sales are increasing each day as well compared to when it first went live. So at this point, it is selling multiple books a day, which I'm really happy about. And hopefully as time goes on, reviews build and more people provide their feedback about it, then hopefully the sales will just continue to increase. Also with the addition of more books, added to it, more children's books added to it, that can also help increase sales as well. When someone buys one book, sees that you've got others and they liked your first one, they you know may go off and buy other books that you have as well. But for now, I just wanna start looking ahead and start creating the next one. Enough about all that, how exactly did I do all this? Well, firstly, as I said, I did take Nuria's book creator course. And what's really great about that particular course is it teaches you how to create the, the whole book without hiring expensive illustrators or editors and all that kind of stuff. So after completing the course, my first step was writing the book. Now I did have an idea for a story lurking about in my head for a little while before taking the course, but you will get ideas on how to come up with story ideas and how to find the more profitable kind of stories in terms of finding what kinds of stories parents are actually searching for on Amazon. And I decided to write a rhyming story because personally, those are my favorite kinds of books to read when I'm reading books to my little girl. From there, it was time to illustrate the book and this part I was really really nervous about because like I said I've never illustrated or done any kind of illustrations before and I wanted it to look professional and match the idea that I had in my head and I wanted it to be able to compete, be on par with all those other books on Amazon that are professionally published and are professionally illustrated. So after watching the modules in the course about the illustrating of the book, I was able to find some really beautiful illustrations and I ended up going for a watercolor style that I felt matched my story. And this little duck here, this is the main character of my story. That was the first illustration that I found. I looked for the duck first and her name is Lolly the duck. And all of these pages in this book, they are made up of multiple illustrations. So some of these I purchased, some of these I took from the Canva Pro account where you get access to their graphics. And I just layered them all together like this. Now it's not as hard as it seems. I basically started with this background, which I purchased. I then added things like these clouds, which I took from Canva, all these little flowers and little ducks and stones and leaves and the sun. These are all separate graphic elements, mostly taken from Canva, the pro account of Canva, some taken from the illustration packs that I purchased. And just talking about Canva, I actually created this whole book in Canva. I do recommend the pro version of Canva. I really do feel, especially after making this book, I really feel that 
the graphic elements you get access to in the pro version are just so much a better quality and you have such a bigger range to choose from when you are creating something as detailed as a children's book but in saying that if you cannot get access to the pro version if it's just not in your budget it is fine you will be able to get by with the free version now the font inside that i used this particular font i also purchased from a stock font website i actually think i got that from creative market because i had a really specific idea in mind of what i wanted my font to look like but again canva has fonts that you have access to free ones and more within the pro version if you just want to use the elements in canva now also you don't have to create the book in canva that's just what i ended up using uh, you can use whatever graphic design program that you normally use you can even create it in Microsoft PowerPoint. That would work really well too. To give you an idea of what I spent on the illustrations and also the font, I spent around $50 in total for all the illustrations that I purchased. Then of course, if you have the Canva Pro account, you have a Canva monthly subscription that you need to pay for. But it is just a very small amount when you compare with how much you would be spending for a professional illustrator, which a lot of times can run into the thousands of dollars. And so basically, once I had sort of made these sort of pages where I added all the elements, I just kept playing with it and just tweaking, moving things around, seeing how I liked whether everything fitted together until I was happy with how the page came out. Now, it did get to a point where I had to say to myself, enough is enough, you could just spend forever tweaking this, moving elements around, adjusting fonts and things like that. Sometimes I do fall into that trap of trying to make something perfect and then end up never finishing it. So if you're somebody like that who tends to get caught in that trap of I need to make this perfect before I can get it out there, you have to get to a point where done is better than perfect. Just get it out, get it done, get it live, get it selling. And if you really feel the need to edit or adjust things later on, you can. You can edit it, you can re-upload it, you can adjust your images, re-upload the book, it's totally fine. Now also, if you have zero experience with graphic design or even just using things like the free version of Canva, creating something very simple. There is a whole massive module in Nuria's course where she has a vid video or a module for every single page of her children's book. Within her course, you follow her making her children's book and she shows you every single page that she creates and how she does it and how to create the page in terms of laying it out, where certain design elements should go and how you should lay it out to look appealing to both parents and children. So if you have zero graphic design or illustration skills, don't worry, there is something in there for anyone, even those who are total beginners. So once I had created my interior pages, I then started to work on the cover. And the cover I wanted to keep sort of minimalistic, sort of simple, also match the interiors style of the book, which has that watercolor style and showing off the main character of the book. Something that I did a lot of was I went onto Amazon and I looked through all the children's picture books and looked at particularly the best selling books. And I looked for what their covers looked like, what kind of fonts did they use, what kind of colors did they use, how were their covers laid out, what sort of elements did they have on the covers. I wanted my cover to fit in with my genre so that it looked like it belonged but I want it to stand out enough so that it is noticeable within the sea of hundreds of other thumbnails on Amazon. I also experimented with different fonts for the cover which I did want to make different to the font that I used inside and I tried a few different ones till I found the one that I liked the most. I wanted the cover to be visible enough and clear enough so that when someone's on Amazon looking at a thumbnail sized image of your book, they can clearly see the graphics and the fonts and the title of the book and everything like that. So I didn't want to clutter the cover up with so many graphics that you couldn't see the font, you couldn't see the title and it would just be a disaster if when your book is that really small thumbnail sized image that a customer can't even read the title of your book. So that's something that's really important you have to remember that when someone's on Amazon they're not looking at this size of a book on their website, they're looking at this tiny little square surrounded by hundreds of other tiny little squares and your customer needs to see what the book's about, 
what the title is and be able to clearly read it in that tiny thumbnail sized image. Once I had done all the graphics side of things, I then needed to write the blurb for my book, which honestly I think was actually so much harder than writing the actual book. The blurb I think took me two or three days to actually get to how I was happy with it. So the blurb is this part on the back of your book, which helps to just summarize what your story is about and hopefully entice a customer to purchase your book based on your blurb. And my blurb currently reads, a little duck wants to play, but before she realizes it, she's lost her way. She tries her hardest to find her way back, but what do you know? She's lost her quack. Lolly the duck has lost her quack and can't find her way home. Discover the sounds animals make as Lolly tries to find her way back, making friendships along the way. And will she eventually find her quack? And so that was what I ended up going with as my blurb. So once I had created my blurb, I also then had to create my description, which was going to go on the Amazon sales page for the book listing. And I also created things like my bio to go on my author central page. And then I uploaded the book. I had all the elements I needed and uploading the book is basically the same process as uploading any other kind of book. So if you have experience with low content books or even high content books in different genre than children's books, then you'll be familiar with this process. It's the same. It doesn't matter what kind of book that you're uploading. And once it was submitted, it was only a few hours and it was approved. So the approval time or the, the wait time to get your book reviewed and approved is so much faster with actual storybooks or high content books than it is with low content books. When you're making things like notebooks, journals, coloring books and things like that, it just seems to take forever to get reviewed. And I think it's because there's just such a massive amount of them that they need to go through. So making books like this, they get reviewed and approved so much quicker. So within seven days, I had created, written, illustrated and published a children's picture book on Amazon and it was available for sale. And I had so much fun doing it. It was such a really great and fun creative process. So if you are someone who is creative as well and really enjoys creating things a lot more involved than, you know, just notebooks and journals, you'll have so much fun doing something like this. And children's books can be as simple or as complex as you like. There aren't really any rules when it comes to making children's books. And there is also an unlimited amount of topics that you can write about. You might be thinking, well, I don't know what to write a children's story about, but when you sit and think about it or maybe do some research, there is so many things that you can create stories around for children. I know that I see a lot of parents out there searching for books that have stories that teach about morals and life lessons and basically trying to teach children how to grow up to be really good people. So you can write stories that teach those sort of really important lessons within a story. But I also know that I read an article or I saw some information about a survey where kids were actually asked what they like most about books. And the majority of them said they just want a book that makes them laugh. So you can actually write stories that are about literally nothing. And as long as they're funny, kids will love them. I know that one of my little girl's favorite books is this one here, The Wonky Donkey. I'm not sure if this is available internationally, but it's very popular here in Australia. And it's basically a story about a donkey with three legs, loves coffee, he's really tall, and he loves to listen to country music. If you're not a parent and you've never read this book, you'll have no clue what I'm talking about. And you'll probably think I'm a bit crazy, but this book is about nothing and kids love it. And if writing just a funny kids book about nothing is what interests you, then maybe try to find this one and just have a read of it. You'll be astonished at how simple it is. And with kids, just simple is better with kids. Now here's another quick one I'm going to show you again. I'm not sure if this is only available in Australia, but this is called The Green Sheep. And it is the most simply, simply written and illustrated book. It's basically a book saying, here is the bath sheep. Here is the bed sheep. Here is the swing sheep. Where is the green sheep? And that's basically how the book goes until the end. When do you find the green sheep? Well, you'll have to read it to find out. But simple, so simple, so simply illustrated. You would read this book and think, what? Seriously? This is a bestseller. Anyone could write that. I could write that. Yes, you could. You just need to do it. 
So if you are interested in creating a children's picture book, then I highly suggest you do check out Nuria's course. If you are interested, I have the link in the description below where you can go to her website and see all the information about what is included in the course and the pricing information and all that sort of stuff. It might seem daunting, and I think especially with the illustrating of a children's book, when you think about creating one, you probably think, I just can't do that, I cannot illustrate a book. Especially if you have never done anything like that before. For. But speaking from experience now, it really is quite simple and easy. And as I say, you can make your illustrations and the story as simple as you want. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that I have shown you that it is possible to make these kinds of books if it is something you've been interested in or wanting to know more about. I'm happy to keep you updated about this book, how it sells, and any future books that I start to make. If that is something that is interesting to you, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up or commenting down below to let me know to keep you updated about it and I'll see you in the next video.